the downtown Phoenix John Doe, 2004, identified as Frank R. Beck. In the early hours of October 19, 2004, the remains of a Caucasian male was found in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, in the area of Central Avenue and West Monroe Street. It appears from his back injuries that his demise could be blamed on a fall from a tall building, and they believed it happened just hours before. They estimated he was 40 to 50 and around 5'7", weighing about 145 pounds. He was missing a number of teeth, and he had blue eyes and gray hair. A surgical implant was found in his right ankle, leaving the authorities to believe he may have limped. Thanks to the DNA Doe Project, Frank Beck has his name again. We know now that he was 57 at the time he passed away. He was originally from Pennsylvania. Little has been released, but it's believed he was a transient in Phoenix at the time. Frank Beck went unidentified for 18 years. Malad City Jane Doe, identified as Patricia Campbell. Patricia Campbell went missing from Pocatello, Idaho in 1978, along with her friend Tina Anderson. The two disappeared on July 23rd from Almeida Park in Pocatello. This was during the Pioneer Days celebration. They had been dropped off at the park, and Tina was supposed to babysit at a home across the street that evening. The neighbor told the police that Tina did in fact show up around 6.30, and she said she would come back at 7 p.m. Tina did not return and was subsequently reported missing. A witness came forward to say they saw Tina and Patricia with a man who was wearing a blue sweatshirt and had a large ring. This was just the first step in a long mystery. Although they had no history of running away, the police decided that Patricia Campbell and Tina Anderson were runaways. As others have noticed, sometimes when I'm discussing someone whose age is lower, they will shut off the comments on my video. It's meant to protect people in that age group, but it's not meant for videos like mine. But when YouTube does the assessment, they can't tell the difference. Unfortunately, when they shut off comments, it also keeps the video from being seen by others as the algorithm doesn't notice it as much. Turns out that those comments make a huge difference. Anyway, for this reason, I'm flashing their age on the screen right now. In 1981, the remains of these two individuals were found in the trailhead area of Two Mile Canyon. This caused everything they believed to be questioned as to whether or not they were actually runaways. They began to suspect that the remains were that of Patricia and Tina. Tina Anderson was eventually identified in 1981 because they were able to match her dental x-rays to the remains. They believe that both females were shot, although it was the skull of Tina that led to this, so they were only able to identify one girl with the assumption that the other one was, in fact, Patricia. Despite the effort of the authorities, no information was found as to what happened to the young women. Then, in October of 1986, in Oneida County, a site that is also near Mallet City, Idaho, he found the skull of an unknown female 400 to 500 yards away from the two sets of remains that were found. They would say that based on the physical configuration, ratios, and proportions of the measurements, they believe the skull belonged to a black female. Later on, a different forensic pathologist would look at the remains and say that the skull belonged to a Hispanic female. One of the investigators stated it was believed that the two girls were seen with a third. It was clear that he personally believed that that girl was the child of migrant parents and she was never reported missing because they were here illegally. Whoever that third person was, they believed that she had been bludgeoned. They said she was struck repeatedly on the head with a blunt object. Although they weren't sure who the third girl was, they were sure it was related to the first two. Even this was incomplete as they were missing a mandible. The authorities kept trying to find answers, and they were, in fact, clear that they believed the scene had not been fully excavated. So they went back looking for new evidence. They believed that the cases could be linked of Linda Smith and Cindy Bringhurst, who also went missing from the Pocatello area. In 1981, Smith was abducted and eventually found after someone took her life that same year. But Bringhurst disappeared while babysitting in 1983. Her remains were eventually found submerged in a creek. Because they had so little to go on, 
as to who was responsible, the focus was on identification. The skull of the third person was sent for DNA, but it was lost when it was shipped from a lab to be processed. Thankfully, in 2018, the FBI was able to find, again, the missing skull so that they were able to further examine it. It was that skull in October of 2021 that was eventually processed by Othram Labs in order to extract DNA that could be used for genetic genealogy. It wasn't necessary because in October of 2022, they were able to disclose the shocking results. The theory of this biracial third person wasn't true. All along, this was the missing skull that belonged to Patricia Campbell, whose other remains were found alongside her friend, Tina Anderson. The mystery is unfortunately far from over. Whoever did this to these girls still needs to be identified. The disappearance of Lynette Culver is also speculated to possibly be related. Lynette Culver's case has been considered to be linked possibly to Ted Bundy, but he's not listed as a person of interest in this case here. Patricia Campbell was missing for 44 years, and depending on which of her remains you consider, she went unidentified for 36 and 42 years. In the years that followed, Patricia Campbell's mother, Melissa, and her brother, Dell passed away without ever knowing what happened to Patricia. Oneida County will be paying towards the cremation and burial of Patricia's remains so that she could be buried with her mother. Anyone with any information, please call the number on your screen. The Baca County Jane Doe, identified as Nora Castillo. In the summer of 1988, a skeleton was discovered on farmland near the city of Springfield, Colorado, in Baca County, by a farmer who owned the land. She was located in an open field, and the area itself was heavily traveled by truckers who liked to go that way in order to avoid the port of entry for Colorado. It was an open secret that this was the way you could go. Unfortunately, by the time she'd been found, her bones had been sun-bleached, which makes DNA so much more difficult. Although, of course, in 1988, DNA wasn't even a consideration. That would come later. Most of her remains were found, and it was determined she had a quarter with her that was minted in 1986. The report I'm seeing says they believe she had been there one to three years. It just shows sometimes how much things conflict because... If you look at the quarter, it couldn't be more than two years, unless the quarter came from someone else. Dental impressions were made and dental records were submitted to the National Crime Information Center, but there were never any hits. DNA was taken later, and there was a recreation done. They stated she was likely of Hispanic or Native American heritage, and they believed she had never given birth. It wasn't true. Nora Castillo was identified in November of 2022, and while she was of Hispanic heritage, she had given birth. There was a daughter out there that was trying to find what happened to her mother. Nora went missing in either 1986 or 1987. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation reached out to the sheriff's office in May of 2021, requesting that they submit evidence from the 1988 Jane Doe case into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons Systems, or NamUs. Nora's daughter had reported her missing in 1996. They didn't exhume Nora Castillo until much later, finally exhuming her in December of 2021 in order to get DNA. DNA was never taken for whatever reason, perhaps because they couldn't successfully do it back then. They eventually got a workable DNA profile and it was uploaded to NamUs, and it matched that of her daughter. Nora Castilla had made a collect phone call to her parents from Colorado around 1986 or 1987, and that was the last time they'd heard from her. I wish I could tell you about her daughter and that she had a good life, but there isn't anything online so far. I know I always hoped that they did. Nora Castilla went unidentified for 34 years. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. So if you enjoy the content here and you're not sure, take a peek to see if you're subscribed. Take care of yourselves and each other.